Bottomland hardwood forests make up more than 75% of the restored acres on wetland reserve easements in the Mississippi Alluvial Valley. Therefore, management of timber stands is a critical consideration in meeting wildlife habitat objectives on your easement. This is the first of two videos that will address forest management guidelines as well as share details relating to forest treatment decisions. We will also discuss how to work with your local NRCS office to obtain guidance and approval. The purpose of wetland reserve easements is to restore, protect, and enhance wetlands on private and tribal lands to provide habitat for migratory birds and wetland-dependent wildlife, as well as provide numerous other wetland benefits. These objectives also apply to the restoration, protection, and enhancement of the forested areas of your easement. While your conservation plan, the warranty easement deed, and WRE implementation guidance provide direction for how you manage forests on your easement. Certain management activities can be tailored to achieve specific goals based on your objectives. Although NRCS policies and program guidelines are structured to achieve WRE objectives, it's also important for you to evaluate your own wildlife habitat objectives. Developing clear and well-defined objectives specific to your easement are key to meeting your own goals the goals of the WRE program, and establishing a successful and effective partnership with your local NRCS office. For us, uh, having quality wildlife on our property, that's the whole objective of buying it, was to be able to have a recreational property to go enjoy. And from the management standpoint, and having all the resources from the NRCS as a partnership, it kind of helps us to, to get the most out of our property because it's an ever-changing situation every year. It seems like different things mature and you have different issues that come up or you may need you know canopy getting closed off and, and you need new sunlight in there so just being able to manage as a whole but you got new and space invasive species coming every year depending on what you just did the last year you know so everything affects everything so uh, it's just a, a, an evolution of a piece of property that I'm learning on a daily basis. First Let's address a common question many landowners ask regarding NRCS program policy on treating WRE forest stands. NRCS policy does allow for authorized timber treatments on easements if it is necessary to accomplish habitat management objectives. This includes commercial sale of the harvested timber. However, NRCS approval to allow a timber harvest on an easement is not based on a landowner's revenue generating interests. Approval is solely based on the need and level of forest treatment necessary to meet program habitat goals. In most cases, the approved treatment will include one or more types of forest thinning. If forest management is warranted and authorized, NRCS will guide you in choosing the most effective means of accomplishing the treatment. Well, obviously our piece of property again was an existing easement and uh, hadn't been managed in several years. So it was uh, closing the canopy. And so we needed to go in and do some thinning. So we uh, contacted NRCS to be able to get us an easement, obviously, to go in and plus learn about it. You know, we wasn't sure. We knew what we wanted was thicker, you know, bedding areas for our deer and more browse. And so we were able to contact those guys. They sent some guys out and, and kind of gave us a plan. And we went in and uh, did some thinning and uh, on a, probably approximately 30, 40% of the property. So. Uh, We've uh, we got huge returns on that investment. Uh, we went in and did just like every third or fourth row, I think, and uh, we were able to get some great, great brows and uh, we've kind of went back to them again. This is our fifth year and uh, wanting to get that management plan uh, on more of the property. The most common forest types on wetland reserve easements in the Mississippi Alluvial Valley are restored bottomland hardwood plantations. Bottomland hardwood plantations are established on a new easement by planting a diversity of native trees within agricultural fields enrolled in the program. So we're in a six-year-old bottomland hardwood plantation on a WRP. Um, one of the common misconceptions that we have is when trees get this size, they're very hard to see from driving down adjacent turn rows or roads because you have a lot of this shrub scrub stuff like this eastern backers. Um, but what you'll start to see probably between year six and year 10, or depending on soil type, it may go a little longer, is they'll start to emerge out of this shrub scrub, as you can see behind me. In this eastern backers and these other shrubs, that's typically a temporary type tree. 
they will become shaded out and they'll typically take care of themselves by dying off as these stands get older. As the young trees grow and develop, the habitat created by these newly established forests is continually changing. It may eventually become beneficial to remove some of the trees to improve the overall habitat conditions. Depending on the growth rate, density, and species of established trees, plantations can typically be evaluated for treatment when trees are 15 to 25 years old. Although general crown thinning is not warranted until age 20 or greater, other habitat treatment types may be prudent at an earlier age. A basic stand assessment can be helpful in determining if a plantation may be ready for treatment. A landowner guide has been developed by the NRCS and partners to assist with conducting an initial stand evaluation. NRCS has developed a tool to guide you in deciding whether or not your stand is ready for treatment. Two of the factors that we look at are live crown ratio and an understory index. And these are just two basic indicators that we're using to decide you know, whether or not something's eligible to be treated. So one thing you might see in this stand is that there's very, very little understory. This stand would score extremely low on that understory index. In a lot of these trees, their crowns are getting smaller uh, as a result of competition. And that's generally a pretty good indicator that it's time to start thinking about thinning. A copy of the brochure can be downloaded from this address. You can also request a copy of the landowner guide from your local NRCS office. If you conduct this initial evaluation and feel your stand may need thinning or other habitat improvement, contact your local NRCS office to discuss the next steps for forest treatment. Portions of some wetland reserve easements may have existing stands of bottomland hardwood that were present when the easement was established. NRCS policy allows for treatment of these stands based on the same forest management concepts to improve wildlife habitat. If your easement contains an existing forest stand you feel might benefit from a habitat improvement thinning, contact your local NRCS office for assistance with determining if the stand is ready for treatment. If it is determined a forest treatment is warranted, a Compatible Use Authorization, or CUA, must be approved and issued by the NRCS before forest treatment can begin. Without an approved CUA, this activity would be in violation of the Warranty Easement Deed Terms. The CUA process allows NRCS to provide authorization to landowners to conduct proper management activities that are compatible with easement objectives and further the long-term protection and enhancement of wetland functions and values. Managing your property is an excellent way to, to improve wildlife habitat, uh, to improve the timber quality and the health of the forest. As forests age and, and get older, you need to keep the density of the trees on an acre, because the acres can only sustain so many. And if it gets overcrowded, then trees start getting unhealthy. And uh, when they get unhealthy, that opens them up for disease, insects, other things. So keeping a good density in your forest for the timber side is a real plus. On the other side is we can manipulate that trees to get sunlight to the ground to improve our wildlife habitat. The forages and the food sources available uh, for most animals is down here. Uh, for parts of the year, the mass crop is good, uh, but for the year round uh, quality of food that animals need, there needs to be sunlight in here. So once you have a wetland reserve easement, you'll have the terms of the easement and in that warranty easement deed, there are a lot of activities that are prohibited. And that's the reason that we have the process, the flexibility within the program to authorize and issue a compatible use authorization. So even though a lot of the activities that you may want to do are prohibited in the deed, the, the compatible use authorization gives you the authority to conduct those activities. So we really do encourage our landowners to have active management. Not every landowner is able to manage as intensively as their neighbor or some of the other landowners. And that provides a lot of diversity across all the easements to the program. But we do encourage the management and NRCS will work with you along the way to just to, to plan and prescribe the best management activities that can give you the best habitat on your easement. NRCS encourages landowner partnership and engagement in easement management through the CUA process. A CUA specifically defines the activity, method, frequency, timing, intensity, and duration of the treatment operations. 
An approved forest management plan specifically addressing these components is also required and will become part of the CUA. Key elements for developing a successful management plan are stand evaluation and planning assistance from a qualified forester, wildlife biologist, or NRCS technical specialist. To ensure proper stand assessment and planning criteria are used, it is essential to coordinate with NRCS early in this process if you are using a non-NRCS forester or a wildlife biologist. Contact your local NRCS office for assistance with developing a forest management plan and requesting a CUA. For more information or assistance with wetland reserve easements or to obtain compatible use authorizations, contact your local USDA Service Center. Wetland reserve management videos were developed by NRCS and the Tri-State Conservation Partnership.